It's not about the CPI. It's about the result of the CPI. It's about interest rates going significantly higher. I talk 75. We're talking 100 basis points now. Be prepared. Strap in. It's going to get a lot worse. Welcome to Investing Confidential, where we try to give you a little bit different spin, uh, a lot different spin than what I've been hearing this morning from the CNBCs, etc. Let's just jump into it. I'm not going to give you the details. You probably read or, or listened to a bunch of stuff on the CPI. You just got to look at the chart. Four decade high. Uh, it, you got to have historical perspective on this. You can't, you can't listen to the spin doctors. You can't listen to the White House. You can't listen to CNBC. Bottom line is, um, I, I continue to say that inflation has peaked. Uh, I'm sure, I'm not going to. I'm not going to jump up and down because it went 8.2 versus 8.3. But I think it has peaked. But what this is telling you is it's sticky. Okay, it, it's not. And again, I'm saying it's peaked because it it has peaked because the economy is uh, in trouble uh, around the world, and it's not just the U.S. We are, we are in trouble around the world. Okay, so recession is here. Slowdown is here. These numbers are all backward looking. We're going to see going forward, inflation is going to go down. But again, it is going to be very sticky. We're not going to anywhere near Powell's target of 2%. The guy's out of his mind. Um, but there's a lot of pressure on him right now. And looking at the next meeting coming up, he's going to have to go 100 basis points now. Originally, about two months ago, they said it was 50. I, I've been saying 75 baked in. Now you're talking about 100 basis points. He's got no choice. Inflation is hot. He knows the economy's slowing, but to save his credibility, that's all he cares about. Okay, this is why he makes policy error after policy error after policy error. The guy's a joke. He is going to jack up rates to try to help his credibility. He's again, be, forget about behind the curve. The guy's clueless. Okay, so he's going to go 100 bips. If if he doesn't, in the market, no matter what he does, if he goes 125. No matter what he does, the guy's screwed. So 100 bips is, is coming. And I think you're going to see it begin to be baked in over time. But again, it's sticky. So no matter what inflation comes down, it's not going to go lower than 5 6% by the, by the first quarter unless we're in a, a depression. But what that means is rates will continue to go higher. So now the terminal rate, which we spoke about, being 5%, the rate where we're going, where we should be, we're not looking at plus 6% now, folks. I mean, that this is this is what we're talking about now. You've got to take this terminal rate. You've got to get rates positive. You've got to get them higher. You've got to bring down the economy. Now with this with this inflation showing that it's very sticky, I've been saying terminal rates five percent. Now I think it's above six. And you know the it, you got to focus on one thing: the magnitude. Think about again historical perspective. The magnitude of how much these rates have gone up in a short period of time is devastating. And again, I will mention this again. It's going to be. This thing in the UK is essentially the tip of the iceberg. Okay, the economy now is sliding faster than anyone has ever has had forecast. Okay, so this pivot, forget about the pivot in the short term, but the pivot's going to happen because again, the economy is sliding into forget about recession. We're sliding into a very serious recession very soon. It's coming. The pivot is going to come, but not till probably second quarter, third quarter. And they're going to have to revise, revise their inflation forecast of 2%, target of 2%. They're going to have to revise it higher, and then they'll be able to pivot. But for now, forget about pivot. The economy is sliding, and it's going to continue to slide. And one interesting data point that nobody's talking about, and I'm going to show you right here. The tr trucking industry is the basis of our economy. It's the base of everyone's economy. Okay, without trucks, nothing gets moved. The truck demand for trucking is plummeting. Okay, it's not not yet what it was during the uh, during the COVID crisis because everything went to zero. But it's go it's going down hard. Okay, this is supposed to be, you know, the the White House says it's supposed to be the economy strong. When well, you don't have a strong economy, when trucking demand is down, that means. People aren't ordering things. There's less demand for, for food, less demand for, for goods and services. This is a key indicator. This tells me the economy is in recession right now. There's no doubt. Nobody's going to show this. I'm showing it to you. The economy is in trouble because there's no demand for trucking, and trucking is the lifeline of this economy and every economy. You know, I, I want to show you some stuff that's just incredible. You'll see NBC this morning talking about 
airline demand, very strong. Delta comes out. Oh, we had strong demand. Again, this is all backward looking, right? They're talking about their last quarter, saying how strong it was, and they, they, they expect, in quotation marks, strong. Well, let me tell you some evidence. If, you, if you've flown in the last couple of years, you, I guarantee you're getting emails from JetBlue, from all these airlines, from you know the, the Expedias, telling you how, hey, you got to fly because air, airline prices are cheap. I just booked a trip to Europe at the, end, at the end of the year. The price was half what it was a month ago, half. Okay, Airlines don't bring down prices unless there's no demand. What they do is when there's no demand, they lower their prices. So th this is fake news, okay? I, I hate to use that term, but this is, this is ridiculous. I mean, I watch CNBC only to get fodder for laughing, all right? This, this is a joke, okay? Saying that there's strong airline demand. Look, airlines are giving away uh, seats. They don't do that when there's strong demand, okay? So fake news, ridiculous. CNBC is a joke, but everyone knew that already. Uh, what, what does this all mean? Stagflation. Europe is already in stagflation. 100% Europe is in stagflation. Inflation is, is it's raging. Okay, it's higher than it is here. And they're already in, in recession. So Europe's in, we are in, we are, if we haven't entered it, we are going to enter stagflation. I think we're already in it, obviously with the CPI print. But, but, but you know, you're going you're gonna to have manipulated GDP numbers coming out. Look, again, this GDP now, all this, all this garbage. But you know these numbers are these numbers are fake. They're a joke, and we we are in a massive slowdown right now, faster than expected. We are in stagflation today, and we're just it's just the beginning. Okay, the rates in the U.S. are going to go, are going to continue to go higher, and the, the 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 volatility and the veracity of the rates going up are causing major major problems around the world, and we're just beginning to see it now. The risk of again so, some of the some of these newspapers start to write about this. The, the risk of financial collapse, financial problems, is, is this going up dramatically because of the rise of these rates? The, again, I'll say it again. The UK pension system is a canary in a coal mine, tip of the iceberg. We're going to see this in other countries and the US, okay? The US is not going to be immune to this, all right? Uh, look at gold, for example, okay? Again, because of because the rate's going higher, the US dollar is strong. You know, gold, I like gold over, over the long term, but in the short term, it has completely broken down, and uh, you know this is this is again a result of the strong dollar. The next chart here, again, these are things to watch. Gold is something to watch, and now we've got Apple. Okay, Apple's going to be uh, reporting numbers. You've got to watch Apple. It is the one stock that really hasn't come down that much relative to relative to the rest of the market. So you know, Apple is at a very you know, strong support level, but but look at this chart. There's nothing after that. Okay, this thing's gonna this thing's gonna if this thing if Apple comes out like I think they're gonna do with with weak guidance, the stock's gonna waterfall lower, and it's gonna take the rest of the market with it. So Apple is the, definitely the one chart to watch here going forward. Relating to Apple, this news on the chips is is incredible. Okay, the United States, you know, limiting chip sales to China. This is not good policy. I'm sorry. I'm. I don't like the CCP. I mean, but, but you know, supposedly we we've gotten the White House supposedly you know globalist free trade. Free, everyone talks about free trade. Donald Trump was against free trade. All this. I mean, give me a break. I mean, where are the globalists when the United States just starts us to resist? They're not going to sell um, chips to China. So what do they want? China? And all of a sudden, if China turns around and says, "Hey, we're not going to sell you rare earth minerals," I mean, tit for tat. I mean, this is stupid. This is asinine, okay? You want to you want to, you know, do something that will help our industry. Bring manufacturing to northern Mexico. Bring it to the southern part of the U.S. Bring the chip manufacturers here, which is beginning. It's not going fast enough, but to to put this out at this time is absolutely absurd, okay? And again, I'm not a China bull, uh, but it is it is absolutely absurd. So speaking about China, they just had their the CCP, the Communist Chinese Communist Party, had a preliminary meeting to this big meeting they're having uh, coming up. And one thing that came out of this, very, very interesting, one thing that came out of this, and again, you could see this here, nobody's talking about it, but I think it's very interesting because of the rumors before. 
the Chinese Communist Party has basically come out, and they're, they're going to be very lenient to the to the to the corruption, the, the corruption that happened before Z came in power. So what has happened is when when uh, when Z came in power, he started putting a lot of people in jail for corruption, which is rightly so. He was really hard on corruption, and he hit some of these guys really hard. A lot of guys were in jail. Uh, you know, is a big controversy trying to consolidate his power. Well. Okay, the Chinese economy is falling apart, and he's under a lot of pressure. So what did he do? He just said, okay, now he, he just said, okay, we're going to be lenient now. So this is this is a, a give and take. This is a negotiation. Uh, you, so what this says is that Xi was under a lot of pressure. He still is under a lot of pressure because of the economy. He's not going anywhere, but he's under a lot of pressure. And what did he do to alleviate that pressure? He basically told the people that are corrupt and stole billions I'm not going to put you in jail. Don't worry about it. That's basically what happened. Very interesting, something that certainly was um, not out there in the press. Uh, one thing I want to mention also, China Evergrande. I mean, this is this is something, again, if you, you, you read some of the mainstream press a year ago, they tell you, oh, it's an isolated incident. No, no, no. China Evergrande, again, for China, was the tip of the spear, uh, the, the, the canary in a coal mine. This thing's a disaster. It's a major problem. It's bringing down the entire industry, and again, the entire industry that basically runs the Chinese economy, right? The, the real estate industry. So this is still an issue. It's hanging over China. It's not going to end anytime soon. And so the bottom line is Chinese, China, the Chinese economy is still very, very weak. And so finally, let's talk. I want to mention one thing about Bitcoin. I'm not a Bitcoin expert, but I saw something today. Look at this chart today. Bitcoin volatility. Take a step back for a second and look, think about why Bitcoin hasn't really gotten to where it should be getting, okay, and where it should be. And the main reason is because it's, it's incredibly volatile, right? You know, the price goes from, you know, a couple grand, two years later, it's 60,000. Then it comes down, it goes from, in, in, in the beginning of this year, it was almost 60, now it's down to, you know, below 20. That kind of volatility, that movement up and down is, is, is terrible for a currency, absolutely terrible. So Bitcoin is not a currency. It may never be a currency, but the volatility in itself just takes the shine off of this, this in quotation marks, store of value. But the big but is here. Bitcoin over the last three or four months has remained in a range, okay, meaning that the volatility has gone down. If, we can, if Bitcoin can remain in this, in this range, I mean, low, lower volatility historically, then there's a chance that Bitcoin could become something. Okay, you've got to get rid of these cryptos. Okay, these 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 crazy cryptos have got to go away, and I keep saying as soon as they go away, Bitcoin is going to start to regain value. But you've got to Bitcoin has got to uh, be a low vol, or it's got to be historically, it's got to stay in this vol vol range, volatility range, and if it does, there's a chance for this digital asset to become something more than just a trading vehicle, a butt of jokes, whatever it is. Uh, but so. What I'm saying is watch, track the volatility of Bitcoin, not the price movement. Don't worry about the price movement every day. If you track the volatility, the volatility stays within this range, you know, then, then there's a chance that Bitcoin could become something more than it is. Well, it's a volatile day. I have no idea where the market is going to end. It could be end down more than this. It could end up. It really doesn't matter on a daily basis. As I told you, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3.45 p.m., it's irrelevant what the market does. There's no liquidity, by the way. That's the reason. There's absolutely no liquidity. Speaking of no liquidity, one last thing. There's no liquidity in the treasury market. Treasury market is the most was the most liquid market in the world. There is no liquidity. There's no demand. We're going to see treasury auctions begin to have some issues because of lack of liquidity, lack of lack of whatever. So in the meantime, just realize that during the day. Uh, the volatility is going to be off the charts relative to histo history. Anyway, traders, as always, happy trading.